Now then, among the many letters I get from viewers asking where they can find certain videos, answer I haven't the faintest idea, or what Michel Pfeiffer's inside leg measurement is, answer ditto, there are always several with a more serious matter to raise. Namely, why is it so difficult outside London to find cinemas which show what might loosely be called art house movies? By this, they don't only mean foreign language films such as Farewell My Concubine or the Welsh Oscar nominee Hethwyn but even, God help us, pictures like Mike Lee's Naked or Ken Loach's Raining Stones. In much of Britain, it seems, cinemas are only interested in showing movies that are made in Hollywood and involve about a million people getting killed. Well, OK, a cinema is a commercial operation and needs to make a profit, but there is an audience out there for more serious films, and their complaint is that they're being largely ignored, so we decided to investigate. <laughs> One of the most successful British films of 1993, Much Ado About Nothing, was a big hit for its distributors' entertainment films, but independent cinema owner Geoffrey Henshaw could not obtain a print. In my particular situation here in Manchester, where I cater for a large number of students, there was a tremendous interest in that film, yet I was unable to get a print when it opened because it was a very limited release. British distributors should believe in the product should care about it enough to be cheeky, to be vulgar, to be aggressive, to be... And that's what I mean by imaginative and resourceful, you know. But if they just sit on their hands and say, well, people don't want to see this product anyway, they really want to see something else, they want to see the Hollywood product, then, of course, we don't stand a chance. They should get out there and fight. There are cases where we spend a lot of money on advertising and marketing and no-one's turned up even if the reviews have been fair to mediocre. And at the end of the day, a good old expression my father's always told me, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. I mean, even if it's true that people don't want to see naked in uh, Manchester, which is it's not, I mean, I actually know it's not true, but even if that were true, the job of the, of the seller is to get out there and challenge that assumption, not to wring his hands and say, oh, well, it's not worth bothering with. It's a bit boring, actually. You're not enjoying yourself? Have you made many friends? No. Have you got um, a goblet or something because my heart's bleeding? When are you going back to Manchester? When are you going back to Manchester? I'm not going back. I think that the mass of the public in England read the sun and I think you have to look at that when you're looking at the cinema industry you can't be making films for independent readers all over the country because there are not enough of them people are more sophisticated generally across the board and I'm not talking about you know um, cultural highbrows in London or anything I mean you know generally speaking people know about the world and enjoy in the broad sense um, you know international cuisine and culture and in that context, it is ridiculous for people only to be fed a limited, um, to some degree, Philistine sort of diet of cinema. One of the advantages that uh, I think the independent distributors have is that they, they tend to focus um, maybe on the London area only for a release to see how the film goes. And they can always strike more prints or, or uh, get used prints in later uh, if they need to break wider. A lot of the time we've committed to a large release, so we're kind of, we've already spent our money and, and the films are out there. Even with big releases, some of the smaller distributors still prefer their films to be shown in multiplexes rather than independent cinemas. But there is no point in, 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 uh, in, an, in a distributor spending large amounts of money promoting a particular film if, if everyone hasn't got the film to show. I mean, it's like advertising chocolate of not having chocolate in the shops. With regard to the multiplex and the independent cinema, I don't really foresee or have seen a major problem. As an independent distributor, I believe we've treated everyone over the years very, very fairly. I feel that all the criticism that is made about distributors should really be centred on ex and exhibitors, because it's, unless there is a place to put the film, there is no point criticising the distributor and not sending it around the country, because the cinemas are just not there that are geared to show these films. Filmmakers like me can and do whinge about distributors and also exhibitors. Um, but the truth is that the great Hollywood machine, the long arm of Hollywood that holds us in its grip, is backed up by 
millions of dollars, which, of course, we don't have. I mean, you know, built into the budget of films such as mine, there is no uh, dosh to, to flog the thing, whereas, of course, built into Jurassic Park or whatever, there's a huge amount. It would be very nice if there was money available to spend more on British films. I mean, my feeling is that when a film like Naked is made, in the budget, £150,000 should be put in for prints and advertising to enable a distributor such as myself or similar to take that film, spend the money on it and just see if it would work with sufficient money and prints behind it. But that has never been attempted. So should more money be invested in the distribution of non-mainstream films? Maybe, because if you look at the ratio between cost of production and the box office return, smaller films like The Wedding Banquet beat Jurassic Park hands down. OK, now you. I wee wee. Wee wee. Take you wee tongue. Wee wee. OK. To be my wedded husband. To happen to hold. Holding to have husband of my... For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Better and richer. No, poor. In sickness and in health till death do us part. Till sickness and death. If you have a big film, the chance to make a lot of money is, is there. So, you know, with Jurassic Park coming up to $1 billion in worldwide box office, that's a huge figure. And so the profit level is, is incredibly high on a film like that. So it's, it's kind of like gambling. Um, the more you throw out, the more chance you have to double or triple or quadruple your money. You, you, you have to be in business to make money. There's no point being in business if at the end of the day you, you've got nil return, you've got to make a profit. The truth is that uh, in many a, a multiplex up and down the country, all you can see are Hollywood product. The real worry then is that the domination of Hollywood in production, distribution and exhibition of films could lead to the exclusion of independent producers, distributors and exhibitors. So Brian Carlsberg, Director General of Fair Trading, has said Competition remains restricted to such an extent that it's appropriate for the Monopolies and Mergers Commission to undertake an investigation to decide whether the industry continues to operate against the public interest. Without Hollywood and the Americans, there would be no film industry for anyone to have. There would be no cinemas open, there would be no work for the uh, journalists that are knocking Hollywood, there'd be no work for the producers that are knocking Hollywood. There would be no industry. And I think it is an extremely a bad sign of the times. It's a very British thing to be knocking success. We're all looking for box office, uh, good box office takings as distributors, but as exhibitors, they're obviously looking at the bottom line as well. They need to put in the films that are successful to make the money. So it's not in their interest to um, play favourites. You know, the Monopoly and Mergers Commission recognise that the public interest should be served, and uh, it's a pity that uh, some of these distributors also don't recognise that, that the public interest is there to be served. All these films will be available on video eventually, within six months from the theatrical release. Um, and most of these little towns do have film societies at the universities or working men's clubs or halls. And all our films, for example, go on to 16mm, so they can be shown at film societies as well, as do the other, other companies as well. So people do have a chance to see them eventually. They should get out and fight to get those films where they should be, which is on British screens in the cinema. Well, let's not knock success, but Mike Lee definitely has a point.